Okay, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to another session of Ask the Experts HR and Business Sessions. We normally do the session twice a week. So we do one on Wednesdays and we do one on Saturdays. So the Wednesdays ones are basically for job seekers who are looking for a job and who also have left their workplace and look for opportunities. Then on Saturdays, it's a general session where we bring coaches and um, experts on different areas to talk about, uh, I mean, what they have much experience in. And this evening, we have in our midst, Mr. Jesse Sego, he has much experience in finance, and Jesse will take us through what he has prepared for us this evening. So Jesse, we are ready for you this evening. With the call is just an hour, so you speak for 30 minutes, and we get our audience to ask their questions. And as you know, please, if you have any questions, just write at the chat, use the chat menu on your, on your phone or your laptop. And if you don't have any questions, please just mute yourself and let's join the conversation. So please, Seth, just as we are ready, we can just, we can take us through. Okay, thank you very much, um, Leslie, for the introduction. I want to first and foremost uh, say a good evening to all of you joining in uh, via Zoom. I must say that um, I don't take it for granted at all for you to take your time off your busy schedule uh, on this weekend to join us to have a discussion. I want to say that I'm not going to lecture. It's not a lecture. I'm just facilitating a discussion. So I'll be looking forward for a very interactive session, looking forward for more insights. I'm going to learn from you and you also learn from me. So we are going to cross fertilize ideas and share thoughts and, 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 and opinions on the subject matter. Um, I want to first and foremost want to thank the management of Africa Skills Hub for this invitation and also for putting this particular session that's the Ask the Experts, HR and business sessions together to ensure that, that I mean, we are honing each other's skills to become better leaders in the, in the global space that we find ourselves. So Yima, thanks a lot and your team for inviting me for this session. I have limited time to to really I mean, deal with the subject matter. But I believe with your, with your audience and with your cooperation understanding, you help me to achieve in the next 30 minutes what I'm intended to achieve. He mentioned, my name is Justice Sego, and I work for a savings and a loans company uh, called Lexeho Ghana Savings and Loans PLC. Happy to head the department for micro, small enterprise lending and also deposit mobilization. So I do a lot of talks when it comes to uh, personal finance, when it comes to financial planning, and so forth. So, and also I do other things as well. In addition to my, my mainstream corporate work, I also happen to be an entrepreneur by the grace of God. Um, I'm the brand servant. I, I, I don't want to call myself the CEO, but I'm the brand servant of West Africa Microfinance Training Institute which is a research and a think tank for players within the micro finance space. I'm also a professional MC as well, a communicator. And the last but not the least, I'm also a minister of the gospel as well. So uh, what I'll do as far as formalities are concerned, I see we have, uh, since people joining now, I hope we have more people to join. But quickly, please just put on your mic. Just mention your name to me quickly. I mean, just mention your name to me. Just give me where, where you are calling us from and also tell us your occupation, uh, then that is it. So please just unmute your, your, your mics and just give me a, a quick introduction of yourself as I've done to myself. Thank you very much. Hello. So let's keep the ball. Hey, Abraham, hello. Yes, Fafa, yes, you can speak. Okay, well, Fafa, you can speak my now. Name is, my name is Fafa Amable. I'm joining you from English, Yaman from Mie Kaswa. I am into insurance sales, and I also have a local um, drinks company where we do all the local drinks, the non-alcoholic local drinks and snacks. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Thank, thank you very for much, Papa. You're welcome. You're welcome, you welcome Papa. Thank you. Okay, Abby.
I think every smart is uh, okay. Comfort. Hello. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Comfort. Yes. My name is Comfort Odronyako, the co-founder of the Makola Foundation. Wow. A group of, yes. A group of well-endowed female business operators. Wow. Yes. Wow. I, love, <laughs> then, I love that one. <laughs> capacity, entrepreneurial capacity building is uh, our hallmark. And so wow. that's what kind of foundation for you. That's good. Auntie Comfort, I'm going to learn a lot from you tonight. Thank you. You share so a lot much. of insight. Yes. Bless you. Thanks. Okay. Abby. If, if, if I don't know what if, I think he has muted himself. Hello. Yes, Justice, we can hear you now. We can hear you, yes. Hello, AB. I think AB. Okay, so I believe and when AB is ready, we'll be able to. Okay, so I believe I believe you can proceed. You can proceed when AB comes on board. We'll be able to connect him through. Okay, so uh, the topic for today for me it's 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 very uh, germane and also I mean, it's fit for purpose for the time that we find ourselves in this whole COVID era and we're trying to go through this moment, trying to adjust and ensure that we, uh, I mean, we, we were able to work within the new normal. The topic for today, for me, it's, it's very intriguing. The topic, uh, as I received it, I'm like, wow, I mean, there's a topic that I believe, I mean, I, I, we need to share a lot of insight. So we are looking at boosting financial immunity versus boosting immune system, the dilemma. Uh, that's, that's a very important uh, discussion. As I said, I'm just going to facilitate and I'll take more insights and feedback from you during the Q&A sessions. But we are to look at boosting financial immunity and boosting immune system, the dilemma. The question that is there even a dilemma when it comes to these two uh, key subject areas? Someone will say, look, there's not a dilemma. Someone will say there's a dilemma. So I believe at the end of the day, we'll be able to, uh, I mean, agree. Both, all of us will agree whether there is really a dilemma between you boosting your financial immunity and boosting your immune system. I believe the talk of boosting the immune system is not new to all of us. Uh, through this moment of COVID, we are being advised to boost our immune system and robust to withstand any uh, I mean, disease causing microorganisms or pathogens. So I believe most of you are boosting your immune system as I speak. I believe so. If, if you've not started, then please, you are late. Um, it, 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 if you've not started boosting your immune system because uh, that is the way to every attack of any disease causing my, microorganisms. Eating more fruits, eating more vegetables. Uh, people are taking in food supplements. Hello? Please, are you hearing me, please? Hello? The light keeps breaking, so... The light keeps breaking, sorry. Is it better now, please? It's now, yes, it's okay. Okay, thank you very much, Ima. Please, so please give me the feedback as I'm speaking. So as I said, we are being advised by the experts or the clinicians to boost our immune system. And as I said, it's the way to go in this era to ensure that we are not attacked by any disease-causing microorganism. And I'm mentioning some of the things that we are doing. I believe you're also doing the same. Where we are taking in food supplement that boost the immune system. We are taking in more fruits, more vegetables, we are resting more, we are taking in more water, we are exercising. So, I mean, it's good for us to boost our immune system, even not for COVID per se, uh, but to protect ourselves 
or to safeguard ourselves from any uh, micro or disease cause microorganism that will get into our body system. So it's even good, even beyond COVID, I believe we'll continue to boost our immune system. It's very important. I mean, it makes you stronger, you live longer. I mean, you will not be attacked by strange uh, pathogens that could just shorten your life, I mean, once and for all. So it's good for us to continue in this light of boosting our immune system. But there's another thing that we also need to take note of. One of the lessons that COVID uh, has and continue to show us is the need for us to build adequate financial immunity. I want to put the word adequate because it's not just I mean, you boosting your financial immunity, but it should be adequate enough to withstand any eventualities as and when it occurs. And for me, at the end of the session, we're able to tell whether there's even a dilemma or these two uh, boosters should complement each other. We'll get to know at the end of, of the session. But for me, I will encourage that we'll continue to boost our immune system. That is very key. We cannot lose guard. We cannot I mean, play with it. Otherwise, you'll be taken by surprise. In as much as I'm advocating for building our immune system, I'll also say equally that we should also look at boosting our financial immunity. We have an adequate preparation. We have an adequate planning to ensure that financially we'll be able to withstand any shocks when it happens. So for me, I believe it's a good uh, topic for discussion. As I said, during the Q&A, we'll be having a, a lot more of uh, discussions. I want to break protocol a little bit. You might permit me to break the protocol. Please, you can interject if I'm speaking and you want to chip in something. I will, I, will, I will allow you. I want us to have a more relaxed session. I mean, little of uh, less of the protocols and so forth. So please, if you want to say something on the Zoom platform, you can you can lift up your hand. You can raise your hand using the digital hand, and I'll allow you to speak so that we have more of a session that is quite more fluid and 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 more engaging. So quickly, let me just move forward. We've done the op opening formalities. And we'll just move on. Those of you who are joining us late, I will advise that in the, in the chat box, just put in your name, uh, where you are calling us from, your occupation, and your experience. Your experience, then we'll be able to move from there. So quickly, after my introductory remarks, your quick expectation for today's session, then we'll quickly move into, into the discussion for A day. So please, what are your expectations for this session? Boosting uh, financial immunity versus boosting your immune system. So that will shape uh, our discourse as we move along. Fafa, Fafa, what's your expectation? Just unmute and just speak to us just in a second. Hello, please, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, Justice. We can hear you. I think they've made themselves. They are listening. So, okay. Thank you very much. So, please, you can also put in your expectations in the in the chat box. Yes. Quickly, I want us to start this discussion on boosting our financial immunity and that of our immune system by looking at certain myths, certain myths or certain misconceptions when it comes to financial planning or financial preparedness. This myth or this misconception is, it's for me, it's serving as a stumbling block, uh, making people not to believe the concept of financial planning, the concept of preparing against the rainy day, the concept of having an adequate rainy day fund or emergency fund. So this myth or this misconceptions, I mean, it's not helping because it's making a lot of people lay back when it comes to them financially preparing themselves against the eventualities of life, which for me, we have no control when it comes to uh, the, the, the event of life that could come at any point in time. We were all here. Nobody thought that COVID or coronavirus was going to hit us this, this, hard, this hard across the globe. We never, we never thought of it. We never, I mean, imagined, but it just happened. These are uncertainties that 
we, 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 we did not have control over. So I want to share with you some 10 myths or misconceptions. As I said, these misconceptions are, are becoming a stumbling block. I mean, preventing people from taking the steps, the decision to even start planning financially against the eventualities of, of, of life. Quickly, let me just start with the first myth. So I'll use FP to stand for financial preparedness or financial planning, whichever way you want to look at it. But FP is only for the very rich or the wealthy. So people believe that uh, when it comes to financial preparedness, when it comes to financial planning, it's just meant for those who have money, those who have amassed some form of wealth or some form of riches. So if the person doesn't see himself as a rich or a wealthy person, the person feels that he's not, I mean, he's not entitled or he's not compelled to, 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 to plan financially. So this one myth that is making a lot of people I mean, shying away from financial preparedness or preparing themselves financially against the unforeseen, being able to build adequate financial immunity against the uncertainties of life. So this one myth that most people are going about saying it and for that purpose, they don't want to invest because they're not rich, because they're not wealthy. The second one, oh, I'll start planning when my income increases. I will start planning, sorry. I will, start, I will start planning when my income increases. So there are people who are also not planning financially. They are not putting any concrete practical steps to start the journey of financial preparedness, giving the excuse that they are waiting till their income goes up. And many a time we say in the Ghanaian parlance that even what I take home cannot even take me home, let alone have some to save or have some to plan financially against the unforeseen of life. So this is another myth that is making people shy away from planning. Let me move on quickly. My income is not enough. So this links to the, this links to the, the, the second myth. Oh, my income is not enough. I'm not receiving enough income. I have a meager salary. I have a small salary. I don't think I can invest. I don't think I can save. But the truth of the matter is the fact that when it comes to financial preparedness, when it comes to financial planning, it's not about your size of your income. It, 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 it's more to do with self-discipline. So I tell you that the most important quality for every investor is self-discipline, not the size of your income. This is a personal quote I've coined by myself that the most important quality for every investor is self Discipline, not the size of your income. So, I mean, it doesn't matter how much you are earning. If you are disciplined enough and you are determined enough to start saving against the rainy day, you can do so. You see, up until COVID, I believe that we all felt that we are in control of ourselves. We all felt that we are in control of our finances. We are okay. We are, we are good to go. And COVID just hit us. And all of a sudden, I mean, we've been thrown into a state of financial difficulties. There are companies that I personally know that when COVID hits them, they're unable to pay for salaries of staffs just for one month. But these are companies that have been in existence for some five years, 10 years. You see, I, I happen to head a department for the micro and small uh, scale enterprise. So I understand what I'm talking about. I mean, customers are calling us that, look, in this COVID time, we have staff to pay. We have families to feed. We don't have anything in our bank account. I mean, there's nothing to lay our hands on. We are hot. Can you please support us? So I believe that COVID has revealed our vulnerabilities as human beings. And this should, I mean, put us in a reflective mood to ensure that we are planning for the next COVID experience. Nobody can tell what will happen in the next decade in the next year, in the next two years. But what I'm saying is that people who uh, hit to did not believe in financial planning, financial preparedness, I believe they are now revising their notes out of COVID. I believe that COVID is teaching us some painful lessons. It's painful though, but we must go through it. It's an experience of life. So I believe that as we're going through this moment, if you're if, 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 if you listening to me and 
I mean, you feel that this discussion on uh, uh, financial planning, personal finance planning, financial preparedness, financial independence is something just for talking's sake. I believe that you must revise your notes. Don't wait for the next COVID experience. At least use this COVID experience as a springboard to start planning financially. So my income is not enough. It's a myth that is making people shy away from investing. I have, I have got plenty of time to plan for my future. So this was another myth, especially for we, the youth. We believe that, oh, we have enough time. I'm 25 years, I'm 30 years. I have enough time ahead of me for my retirement. So let me just, I mean, while away time, let me just, I mean, I may have some fun. And the fact is that time and tide wait for no man. And for me, is it been good for you to start investing whilst you are a young adult, whilst you are a youth or you are a youngster? This is the time that you must start investing. It's very important because once you start now, you're able to accumulate a lot of funding, a lot of funds against rainy day, against the emergence of life, against the exigencies of life. So even in your youthful days, this is the right time for you to start doing something when it comes to planning. Then some also have this myth or misconception that, oh, if I have money with me, why should I go and invest in a bank? Why should I invest in an asset management company when I can start my own business? I mean, Auntie Charlotte said, I mean, I mean, the, the entrepreneurs doing well in the market space. So yes, uh, people believe that, why should I invest? Why should I bother myself to look at financial plan when I can invest my money into a business venture? It is good. As I said, I'm an entrepreneur myself. And I believe that, yes, I mean, if you have the drive, if you have the passion and you have what it takes to set up a business, please go ahead and do so. But please, the fact that you have a business doesn't mean that you must forget about financial preparedness or financial planning. Because as I earlier mentioned, there are, there are companies in this town, when COVID hit them, they cannot come back. Companies are folded up. Companies are collapsing each now and then. So the fact that you have a business does, and even for me, having a business, you must take the, the concept of financial plan or preparedness very seriously. It must be part of your entire business continuity plan. It's very important. So please don't tell me that, oh, I mean, I, for me, instead of investing or putting my money aside against the rainy day, I'd rather invest in the business. It's good. But ask yourself, when something happens to the business, what is the fallback position? When something happens to the business, what is the fallback position? Always ask yourself this question as an entrepreneur. That is why we advise that one, you have something like insurance against risk that nobody can control. I mean, so it's important. Please don't tell me that you don't want to invest, you don't want to plan financially because you want to do business. Go ahead and do your business, but still have a fallback position when it comes to uh, financial planning. Then also, risky to people are not investing because they feel investing, I mean, it's, it's, it's risky venture to get into. Yes, the truth of the matter is that uh, life is full of risk, whether you like it or not. I mean, our life is full of risk. And uh, th that, that is why when you invest, we give you what you call rate of return. We compensate you for the risk that you are taking. So risk should not be uh, an obstacle for you planning financially. So the fact that it's risky to invest, and we have various forms of uh, a, a risk within the framework of the investment space. So depending on your level of risk, you can go for your level of investment, as simple as that. If you're the type that you, you love so much risk, you can be looking at the capital markets, uh, or let me say the share markets. If, if, if you're the type that you are very conservative when it comes to risk. You can be looking at things like the money markets, the treasury market. So there are a lot of investment instruments you can look at, depending on your risk level. But the fact is that risk should not deter you from planning financially. Then people feel that people who are engaged in financial planning are frugal. Uh, in our parlance, we'll say, I'm going to prepare. Permit me to use the account dialogue. But the fact is that with scarcity of resources, the fact is that we don't have anything in abundance. And the only way that you can survive in an environment of scarcity, as we find ourselves, is for you to be economical. That's, a, that's another word for a, a frugal. You must be economical, you must ensure that you are, you, are, you, are, you are making the right purchases, you must ensure that you are, you are being economical with your spending. It's very important. You can't live an extravagant life and still want to 
enjoy the fruits of financial planning. It doesn't work that way. You can't eat your cake and so on to have it. Then the future is today. The people will feel like, oh, the future is today. So, Charlie, there's nothing like future. I mean, I mean future, no, no one in there. That's what people will say in our, in our palace. So they don't believe that we should plan for any future. The future is today, but that is a misconception. It's a myth. As I said, myths are things that over the years is widely held as, as a belief or as an idea. But for me, many of these myths are false. And this and this one of them. So people say that the future is today also is deterring them from taking the steps to invest. Life is short and worth enjoying. People feel like, oh, life is short. Let me enjoy life. Why should I bother myself and invest? Why should I bother myself and put money aside to, to I mean, to for the future? Charlie, let me just enjoy life. And I mean, that is it. When, when, when God comes to take me, then I'm gone. Then I, I, that myth. So I believe we are done with the myth. Good. So these are some few myths that I've shared. I believe some of you could relate to this myth. I believe so. I believe during the creative questions, just let me have your 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 experience. But these are the myths and misconceptions that are deterring people from taking the step or investing or preparing financially against the rainy day. Let me go to the enemies of FP. So quickly, I'll go through with you. This one, I'm going to run it through. I believe I mean most of you could identify with some of these enemies. So these are enemies that are fighting people planning financially. I call them the enemies of FP. The, so I'll discuss the 10 enemies of FP. The 10 enemies of FP. First is lack of financial discipline. The first enemy to FP is the lack of financial discipline. And I'll always say that financial discipline is, 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 is an ingredient. It is, it is a trait. It's a, it's, it's, it's a habit that you can't forego if you want to succeed in every endeavor that you find yourself. It's not just linked to FP or financial preparedness or financial planning, but in any venture you find yourself, I believe those in business, those studying, I mean, in those who are, who are married, in any venture you find yourself, if you don't have the ability to, to, to suppress or to control your feelings, your desires, your wants, your emotions, look, you cannot become successful. So discipline for me is the heart of, the heart of becoming successful in everything that you do in life. So lack of financial discipline is one enemy to financial preparedness. Let me go on, on, on necessary spending. So one of the enemies to help you is unnecessary spending. Many a time people spend on things that is not necessary. They know it. M many a time we are being, I mean, controlled by our desires and our wants and we spend on things that are not essential. Things that are not necessary. And other day you feel like, I mean, so you are, you are like, you receive your income, you're like, oh, ah, my income, all of a sudden my income is just gone. I can't find where the, where the income is. So one of the enemies of FP is unnecessary spending. Let me move on quickly because of the sake of time. Bad counsel, bad counsel. What kind of friends are you keeping? What kind of counsel are you, are you, are you receiving from friends, from people within your inner circles? But it's very important. You see, the kind of friends you keep has an influence on your net worth. Let me repeat it again. The kind of friends you keep have an influence on your net worth. So if you keep the right kind of friends, you receive the right kind of counsel, and you receive the right kind of advice, that could propel you on in life. So please, what kind of counseling are you, are you, are you, are you, are you with people who also believe that this whole financial planning, this whole financial preparedness discussion, I mean, it's, 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 it's just a mirage. Or you have friends that are encouraging you to take the step to start planning for the future. Also, temptation. Another key enemy to FP is temptation. Many a time when you have money in your hands, that is when you face these temptations. Temptation to, to expand. Temptation to buy things that you don't need. I mean, they will be there. These are for temptations will come. You see, just imagine anytime you receive money, just just I want to I want you to just ponder over when you get some money in your hands, all of a sudden, a lot of things begin to run through your mind. Temptations tend to soar. And if you don't control that temptation through discipline, you give in to to, to just misusing the money that you receive or the income that you receive. Another enemy to LP is lack of goals. I believe that goals are very important in life. I believe that we need to all have a purpose. And having a goal in financial planning is very key because 
That is what gives you the morale. That's what gives you the motivation to continue to invest or continue to because you have a goal that you want to achieve. So in life, you must have what you call financial goals. I don't know your goals, but I believe when we start a Q&A, we can, we can share some few thoughts on, 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 on your goals and, and see what we can advise. Then lack of budget. Many people don't have budget for the money that they receive, and it's very dangerous. You see, if you, if, if you don't have a budget, then that is when, when the money comes through your hand, you have temptation coming in, lack of discipline, the time you realize you've just, I mean, spent the money, and there's nothing left for, for, for you to even think of investing or even saving. So please, budget is very important. I mean, so budget is very simple. It's just a plan of how you are going to expend your income when you receive it. So it's your income and expenditure. And then you just net it off. And it's very important for you to have, and for me, the budget must be written down. Don't tell me that you have it in your head. It's not enough to have your budget in your head, please. Even the good book teaches us to write down our vision. So please, put down your budget. Find, find a notepad, a notebook. Put down your weekly, your daily, your monthly budget. And ensure that you are, you, are, you are going by your budget. It's very important. And there's a rule when it comes to budget. There's a rule when it comes to budget. We have the 50, 30, 20 rule. I believe most of you know this rule, the 50, 30 rule. And this particular, I mean, rule of thumb uh, was amplified by one senator in, in, in US uh, called Senator Elizabeth. I mean, she really amplified this particular rule. It's just a rule. I mean, that says that, look, when you receive your income, dedicate or allocate 50% of your income to your essentials or your needs. Then you do 30% for your wants. You do 20% it's after you've taken off your tasks. So these are, these are net income. So here, if you're a Christian, I would say after taking off your, your, your tithe, or your, and your tax as well. What is left? 50% can go into your needs or essentials or necessities. You have 30% going into your wants and you have 20% going into your savings or investment. And for me, I would say that this is just a rule. It's the rule of thumb. It's not a casting stone uh, thing. So you can look at it and look at your comfort level and define your own uh, uh, percentages. But the fact is that I will advise that you suppress more of the wants. Once you suppress more of the wants, you can increase your percentage for your savings and investment. Even for the needs and the essentials, I believe if you do much more a thorough audit on your needs and your necessities and your essentials, you can still save some money and move it into, for me, I always advise that let's keep the 20%, the always increase it. So let's suppress the wants. That's very important. The things that really, I mean, yes, it's, it's a want anyway, but it's, you, can, you can do something with it. Lack of knowledge lack of knowledge. And as the Bible says, lack of knowledge, my people perish. So please, one of the enemies to FP is that most people I mean, don't have the requisite knowledge when it comes to financial planning. They don't know what to do. They don't know who to talk to. That is why we have experts all over. That's why we have the banks. That's why we have the asset management companies. So please, let's seek knowledge when it comes to financial planning. It's very, very important. I mean, the more knowledgeable we are, the more we are able to make informed decisions. Then procrastination. This is one major Enemy to FP, procrastination, procrastination. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. You delaying or you procrastinating is one of the greatest enemies of FP. I know there are people, this discussion on financial planning, financial preparedness, I don't believe that it's, it's the first time you are hearing it. I believe you've heard it severally. I mean, you've gone for seminars, workshops. You, you know it, but the fact is that the, the whole power to start is the problem. You are always procrastinating and it is one of the enemies to FP. Then lack of patience, lack of patience. Many people lack patience when it comes to this whole discussion of financial. You know, financial planning is more to do with something in the future. So it means that you must, you must, you must have the pains taken to wait because when you talk about investment, it's you postponing your current consumption for future consumption. You know, we are living in a world of instancy. Everybody is, is, is at the edge of making money quick, quick, People want to become rich overnight and so forth. So people lack the patience to go through this process of financial planning. Financial planning in itself is a process. It's a pro not an event. It's a process. It's a, it's a means to an end. So please let's take note. Then the last one, making poor financial decisions. 
So yes, if you make one of the enemies to have peace, most people make poor financial, and that is why, please, you must consult an expert if you need some sound financial advice. Let me go to the fruit of FP, then we are done quickly. I'll use five minutes to go through this. Uh, the fruit of FP, we've dealt with the enemies of FP. Now let's do the 10 fruits of financial preparedness. And for me, these fruits, once we're able to bear these fruits, automatically we defeat the enemies. Once we're able to bear this fruit, automatically the enemy is defeated. The enemies to FP is defeated. And these uh, fruits, as we bear them, becomes a habit. It becomes our principle. So, I mean, this 10 fruit of FP is more to do with the principles. What we must do, the things that we must, we, must, we must see ourselves doing to ensure that we are adequately preparing ourselves against the rainy day. Discipline. As I said, discipline is very important. That's the first fruit. So please, if, 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 if you want to become successful in financial planning, if you want to become successful in everything that you find yourself doing, please, discipline is the name of the game. Discipline is the name of the game. Consistency is very important. Consistency is very key. Please, uh, if you want to see the fruits of financial preparedness, if you want to build adequate financial resources to meet or to catch up with unforeseen eventually, please must be consistent with, with, with your investment planning. Please don't be breaking them. It's very important. Then persistence. Don't give up, please. Nothing should make you give up when, when you start planning financially. It's very important. Sometimes things, things could happen. Things could come your way, but please be persist. Persist in, in, in ensuring that you are embarked on this journey of FP. Then value small beginnings. is very important. There's a saying that little drops of water makes a mighty ocean. So please, you must value small beginnings. As I said, it's not about the, the size of the money you have or you are investing, but it's more to do with the consistency and the persistence and the discipline. So please, never despise small beginnings when it comes to investment. Little drops of water makes a mighty ocean. You must live within your means. But it's very important. Anytime you are living outside of your means, it means that you are running to debt. Anytime that you find yourself spending more than your income, then that's when you're running to debt. Right to deficit, and it means that you must either go for borrowing or knock at friends' doors or family members' doors for money. So please try and live within your means. Please live within your means. Then patience. I mentioned patience. So please, I mean, when it comes to preparing, when it comes to boosting our financial immunity, it's a process. And once a process, it requires some bit of patience. It's very important. Hard work, please. Hard work pays because. I mean, you need the money for you to embark on financial uh, preparation, for you to embark on financial planning. You need money for you to boost your financial immunity. So, and it will come out of work. It's not, it's not through magic. It's not through money rituals. If, if, if you want to properly boost your financial immunity, you need money to do that. So please, let's work hard. Let's go there, strum out. Hard work, I believe, pays for me. Take care of your health. It's very important. Please, I want to say that Let's not downplay on our health when it comes to planning. Because you see, what is the point that you, at a day you get yourself, keep you down, you can't work, and the little man that you have with you, you must use them to cure yourself. So please, it's very important we take good care of our health within the discussion of financial preparedness or financial planning. So exercise more eat the right kind of diet is very important because you can boost your financial immunity but if you don't take care of your health you will use that same uh, money to get up for yourself at the hospital or at the clinic if you're not careful you can even run down and you have to go for loans to to, to just i mean care for yourself then monitor your investment it's very important please don't just plan and just leave it just like that please you must monitor your investment you must know what is going on with the business that you are, you are investing in. I mean, just monitor. It's very, just monitor your investment, the company that you are investing in, monthly basis. Let, let, let them send you reports. Let them send you your statement. Know what is happening around them. Google about them. Find, I mean, more about your, the company that you are investing in. It's very important. Please monitor your investment. Then you must be knowledgeable. 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 It's very important. So for me, this, this fruit, as I said, if if defines uh, our principles, defines our habits when it comes to financial preparedness, financial planning. And let me leave you with this personal quote. 
I say what? Procrastination is the fertilizer that makes financial difficulties grow. That's my own coinage. Procrastination is the fertilizer that makes financial difficulties grow. Don't wait till you are with an emergency. Don't wait till you are hit with, 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 with some kind of problem and you find how important the discussion of financial planning is. As I said, most people have had their painful experience through this COVID moment. These are my contacts on the screen. I have a WhatsApp line, and on WhatsApp line, my email address, my Skype address, and please, I'm available for, for, for you to connect with me any point in time, and, and I'll be willing to serve you. I'll be willing to discuss with you. There's more for me to share, but because of the time, I believe in, a, in, in another forum that we have enough time, we can delve deeper into most of the things. So yeah. thank you very much, Ima, and thank you for your audience. Thank you, my, my, thank you my so much, Jesus. Thank you. Participants. Thank you so much. Thank you, Justice. I think you, there's a few things that you just you said, and I've never even. I see some of the questions that were, were on the chat. So if you, let's take those questions on the chat, and I will ask you some more other questions I have. Um, so I, mean, I think you mentioned about temptation. And uh, I mean, yes. when, you, when you went through a lot of methods for me, I thought, I mean, to me, it makes sense. I mean, if I have money, why do I invest? If, have, if my income is small, why do I have to save? And I think this evening, if you're able to, I mean, take us through yourself for us to know that um, you, no matter what, you need to, be able to start saving. It's all about discipline. But how do you manage, how do you control temptation? How do you manage temptation when it comes to the. the okay, so. The, okay. Yeah, so for me, financial planning. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, we are all faced with temptations. I must, I must be frank. No one is immune to temptation. You receive your fat check. The day you receive some fat money, that's when the temptation is very high for you to, I mean, expand on things that you've not even thought or imagined. I think to deal with temptation, it's, it's more to do with you, the individual. So discipline happens to be the antidote to dealing with temptation. So it's very important, once you are disciplined, look, you'll be able to, I mean, work on this temptation. You'll be able to, I mean, suppress the temptation when it comes. So once you are disciplined as an individual, you'll be able to suppress issues of temptation when it I mean, as I said, it comes. I mean, it, we all face it. I also face it when, when, when I receive some fat check in my account. All of a sudden, you, you see a lot of thoughts coming through your mind. You want to explain how you do this. But with discipline and with the fact that you have a purpose, because as I said, once you have a goal that you want to meet, all this becomes a way of fighting that temptation because you know that you want to achieve something. So you, you will not let the temptation override your discipline and your purpose. Okay, I get it. I get it. And there's a question. I mean, there's a lady, a lady asked... Uh, a sensible question. I wanted to answer the question. I sent it to you. That's fine. Yeah, so if you have seen the question, she was asking about, I mean, look at all the, this issue that happened to the banks, the financial institution. I mean, where do we go? We yes. Yes. And yes. So where do we go? It's true. The advice you give us on those financial institutions. And I think in your slides, you never mentioned any instrument or any financial institution that you can we can go there. So if you can advise us on those ones, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ima. I think this question is very germane, I must, I must say. Yeah, so, you know, there is, a, there is a loss of trust and confidence within the banking and the investment market because of the happiness within, uh, the happiness that occurred during the financial cleanup, which for me, I, I always say that it's a necessary evil. The financial cleanup is a necessary evil now, as we can all tell, we now have a more resilient and robust financial system, which is good for our economy and for driving the discussion when it comes to, I mean, financial business. So, yes, I know people have lost confidence. I know people have, uh, I mean, lost trust in this whole asset companies that deal in asset management company because it also hits as well. I mean, we had some license of some asset management companies I mean, being revoked and so forth, banks, licenses, microfinance and so forth. But the fact is that, as I said, you know, one of the myths is that it's risky to invest. 
So I, I mentioned that as part of the myth or misconception. But the fact is that there are good companies out there that, for me, can't take good care of your monies. And that is why after the cleanup, as I said, we now have a more robust and resilient financial system. That is why now, if you want to invest, even though, yes, all the companies now are okay financially, they are, they are, they are good, you still need to go the extra mile to talk to an expert. Or you can go to the Securities and Exchange Commission if, 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 you, want to, if you want to engage them for an advice on what to do. They will tell you where you should take your funds. But so please, I mean, don't, don't get worried with the happenings. That's already happened. The lessons have been learned, but I can promise you that we have a more robust and resilient financial system now. And your monies are very secure and guaranteed within the current financial framework that we find ourselves. All what you need is to get some kind of sound um, uh, ex, uh, expert opinion on where to invest and, and, and which company to invest in. So that is it, Ima. And also, as I said, I mean, I mentioned, even though it wasn't in my slide, I mentioned some of the investment instruments that we can, we can look at when it comes to investment. So for instance, as I said, depending on your comfort level, depending on your risk appetite, uh, as I mentioned, you, I mean, if you assume you don't want to risk so much, I mean, there are, there are, there are a lot of uh, uh, investment vehicles like uh, mutual funds or uh, collective schemes, for instance, like mutual funds, where you can be putting some, some money aside, uh, small, small money, just to invest every month. And we have companies that, I mean, I've, I've, I've over the years proven that they have a good track record when it comes to use of mutual funding and so forth. We have uh, uh, treasury bills, which is the money market. We have the shares. We have, I mean, fees deposits with institutions. So we have a lot of instruments as I said, once you engage me, I'll tell you, I will we'll discuss to know what your appetite is, that I can advise you appropriately. But we have a lot of instrument that you can, you can, you can invest or start preparing financially. Okay, I think there's another question that you can also answer. Then, so please, um, okay, let me unmute the audience. They also want to ask questions, so I'm going to unmute all of them. And I think they can even unmute themselves. So please, if you, if you want to ask any question, you can unmute yourself and ask your question at this moment. If, just there's a question on the platform, so if you can answer that question whilst I'm getting them to, to unmute themselves. Yes, yes. I, okay, so I think I see, I've seen, I've seen for first uh, question that I mentioned of insurance. And okay. she's asked, okay, so let me read for first uh, comment. You mentioned insurance in the presentation. Most people, including some entrepreneurs, unfortunately do not believe in it. What do you say about this? Okay, so Fafa, let me just attempt to, to, to answer your question. I know that, yes, there are some issues with some insurance companies. You see, yes, when it comes to claim payment, when it comes to transparency, when it comes to uh, showing good faith, I know people have their own experiences when it comes to dealing with insurance companies. But I can tell an authority that they are good insurance companies as well that have the necessary financial backing. I mean, and they've proven over the years. When it, I'll say to you that, I mean, you just have to engage the right experts. As I said, we have good insurance companies in the system. Yes, I agree that there are others that are also causing problems in the space. And I know that the attempt to also clean up the insurance space, and we are looking forward to, to, to happen. I believe even for COVID, to have even happened this particular year. They are looking forward to increase their, their capitalization. So I believe that we are able to weed out, and I believe that those that will remain in are companies that you can, you can really vouch for, or I can, I can vouch for. Okay, another question. So, I think Mr. Herbert is on the line, I think. Okay, 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 Mr. Herbert. Okay, hello. Yes, hello, Mr. Herbert. Herbert. Yes, please, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I can hear you, Mr. Herbert. Oh, okay, sorry, I was going to type in my question, but <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just speak around it. Um, well, for me, I'm just looking at the- Yeah, it's all good the scenario where most of the finance people, maybe the accountant or the financial controller or whoever is in charge of 
a company's you know um, finances are failing to yes. advise the business owner or the CEOs on how to manage their reserves. For instance, we yeah. are in 2020 yeah. and we've been faced with this COVID. Now, yeah. most companies, if you look at their financials for 2019, they declared some amount of profit. Now, yeah. you ask yourself, yes. what have they done with that profit? COVID hit us in March. So if by the end of December you have declared profit, are you saying that between January and March you have either reinvested everything back into the business to the extent that you are now so hard pressed that you have to take certain measures like cutting off staff and reducing um, maybe the operations just because you cannot survive because of COVID. I don't think we are getting it right. Because if you have declared profit as at December, no matter how small it is, I don't think by the end of the first quarter, you have squandered all the profits that you made. Now, take the case of a company that has also been in existence for maybe the past three, four, or five years. And every year, they've been declaring profits. Now, you ask yourself, what has happened to the accumulated reserves that they have made over the period? Is either they are not going by the prudential uh, financial ratios of managing a company, as in putting some money away for a rainy day, or they are just using whatever money they get to do other things which are not part of their business. We all had most of the hotels and the restaurants complaining that um, COVID has come and government has to give them stimulus packages. Otherwise, they cannot survive. And it also gives you a clear indication that most businesses are not healthy. They are just running, as we say, from hand to mouth to stomach. And it is a vicious cycle. So you will see that most of them don't really have enough cash to run their operation. How much more even save some of the cash that they are making? Because if COVID hit us between March and June, which is three months, are you saying that a company that has been in existence for five years, six years, 10 years, cannot survive three months of hardship? I don't think we are getting it. So it's between the finance people and the business people and the CEOs and the owners of the company that whatever reserves they have, whatever profits they make, they should really you know, have a better way of expending those profits and keeping some in the company for a rainy day. That's the, the contribution I want to add on. Ms. Albert, I think I think I like your contribution. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for for sharing your observation and your and your, your viewpoint. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes, we are yes, 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 hear you. Yeah. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Good. Mr. Lawson, I think I want to say that I mean I'm I'm very happy to hear. Good. So I'm very happy to hear your submission on your observation of this whole COVID and its impact on businesses. I believe you've 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 nailed the, 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 the nail right on the head. And for me, uh, I believe this speaks to the importance of what we call business continuity plans. So it means that we have more companies, or almost every company in Ghana is doing business as normal. So nobody is really sitting down to plan that in the event of an eventuality, do I have enough kind of cushioning? To, because as you said, it's very strange for me. I mean, working in the micro and small enterprise space, that COVID just hit us in March, and someone cannot honor a, a salary obligation towards my... And for me, that speaks to the importance of we, I mean, taking a conscious effort to build within our various institutions a robust and a very strong, resilient uh, business continuity plan, which has issues of financial planning and financial preparedness in there. Because as you said, people are not really saving towards the rainy day or two. We just, we just hit with COVID. All of a sudden, every company is collapsing. All of a sudden, every company is going down. So I believe that this, for me, even lay credence to our discussion this evening that of us who are having businesses, please, I will encourage that you put in proper systems to build a solid 
business continuity plan. Which in there, you should have your, your financial planning in there. It's very important. So, Mr. Lawson, thanks very much for, for, for your observation, your insight. You are spot on. You are spot on on that. Thank you, too, bro. Thank you. Uh, for me, I, I think it's um, our, our accountant and our financial people should, should be able to learn. I think what Mr. 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 Lawson said is, I mean, it's right. I mean, if you hear big companies in Ghana who are not even able to pay their staff within two months, was they are home and they are complaining. I ask myself, so then some of us that we are small businesses, then we shouldn't even cry at all. And so I think it's a, it's a whole um, a skill. You know? so, so I think the, the banks and the financial institutions like Justice Yourself and Mr. Lawson, you should, you should be able to talk to the business owners and the entrepreneurs. I mean, on all these ways, they can be able to safeguard their, their, their money, if the money is sitting in the account, what can they use for, what, what, how can they turn around to, able to um, make profits on it or make some um, investments on it. And I think this is something that you people should take it up, justice. You should take this thing up. And Mr. Mr. Lawson, hey, but, you know, you, but you know, you know, uh, Ima, the truth of the matter is that, you see, our economy is dominated by sole proprietorships. Our economy is dominated by one-man businesses. And many a time, these people don't want to take advice from anybody. I, I think that is the crux of the matter. I mean, look, I believe Mr. Lawson will, will share in this same viewpoint that most of our, our companies we have within the micro, small, medium scale enterprise, majority of them are sole proprietors. And for them, they'll tell you that, look, it's my business. It's my company. I choose to run it as I want it. Who, I mean, So I guess you, you come to advise me. But I believe that if we begin to send the signal, I believe the experience, as I said, with the COVID experience, if if no one takes or if and if we don't take the lessons thereof from this COVID, then I mean it I'll be very surprised. I don't I, I'm believing that no business is it better? Yes, Hello, better. I hear you justice. Hello? Hello, Ima? Yes. Is it better? Good. I was saying that, I mean, you made mention, you made mention of the fact that we must advise uh, business owners and so forth. And for me, I'm saying that, I mean, even for this COVID experience, with the experience and the lessons that we've learned out of COVID, you don't even need someone to even come and talk to you about the need for you to prepare against the rainy day. I mean, anybody who will not take the lessons from COVID seriously, then that person for me, leaves much to be desired. So I believe that, yes, I mean, we must begin to drum home the need for our, our sole proprietors to begin to look at the discussion or the concept of business continuity. Where you have in there your financial plan is very important. You see, for me, there's a rule of thumb that if you are hit by an emergency, you have enough buffer to at least take care of yourself for the next three to six months. It's a rule of thumb. You can choose to increase it if if you increase the better, but at any point in time, any sound institution, if you are hit with any emergencies or if you are hit with any that you have put into your for the next three to six months, but we saw something different when COVID hit us. Even one month, folk with another their salary obligation, and that's that's very. I mean, further have a more wider consultation, discuss more of the groups that take care of the micro, small, medium scale enterprises. I'm going to drum home that. So, I mean, lastly, I'll be happy that if we can go beyond this and engage the groups uh, to, to do presentations to their members, that look, this is the time for them to start planning against the next COVID experience. Yeah, guess thank you so much. I, mean, I think uh, you've You've, uh, you have your, your, your phone number and everything on the slide, and we are going to record this session. It's being recorded. We're so going to share it on the on WhatsApp pages. It will be also on YouTube, so we'll share with our community. We'll share around. And I'm sure definitely people will get in touch with you. And we can, we can also post the next section again. Do you have more, que that, you have more, more questions? 
I think for now, no questions so far from any of our audience. It's more of comments um, on, 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 the, on the presentation. So if there's no any other question, if, if it's past seven already, we will we'll have to bring the, the session to the close. Um, if, is there any question on anyone with any question? If there's no question, then just do you have any your final words and we wrap up for today. Okay, thank you very much, um, uh, Ima, again, once again, thanks to the team, and thanks to everyone who was able to connect via this platform. Um, as I said, uh, I've learned a lot with, the, with, the, with opinions. Also, the questions that came in, I mean, were, were, were very germane, and I believe that we've been able to address your questions. So please, let's, let's connect. I mean, I mean let's, let's keep on talking. And wherever you are, please, if you've not started planning, or if not started boosting your financial immunity, please, I will start, make a decision now and take the steps to start boosting your financial immunity. As I said, both whether financial immunity, immune system, it should go hand in hand. So please, as you are boosting your, your immune system, boost your financial immunity as well, so that you stay as a healthy uh, and, and also I mean, as someone that is sound. So thank you very much, Ima. Um, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining this call and we'll come again next week on Wednesday as well as Saturday. So please, if you want to be part, you can join our WhatsApp group and we'll definitely share the video after this call. Thank you so much, Justice, and we'll talk later. Bye for now, Justice. Thank, thank you very much, Ma. Bye.